Do you know if you are a perceiver or a judger? Let me explain the characteristics to you and please comment below and let me know which one of the two you think you are and also which one of the two you think that I am. And then I'll talk about how each type adds uh, or strengthens the possibility of growing an authentic business and what you might want to learn from the other type, whichever one you are. Okay. So uh, first of all, the perceiver judger dichotomy is a personality typing. It's part of a personality typing system called Myers-Briggs. You may have heard of it. it uh, a lot of people take the test when they're in some schools, you know, and so please let me know what you think you are. You're a perceiver or judger. Let me start with um, describing the perceiver because according to a 2017 study by the very company that publishes Myers-Briggs, uh, uh, entrepreneurs tend to be perceivers, okay? And perceivers, what, what, what describes a perceiver? They are, and I'm going to look at my notes here as I go along, they're curious, they're, creator, uh, they, they're creative, they love to gather information, they tend to work independently because they don't like bureaucracy, they don't like rules and structure, uh, they're more open to risk-taking, uh, they're more adaptable, so they don't need to prepare a lot of contingencies and escape clauses, and uh, they prefer to keep their options open. That's, that's a, a central uh, defining characteristic of a perceiver. Um, however, because perceivers are open, very open and carefree, they also tend to be indecisive. They want to keep their options open, so they don't like to decide, make a decision, and certainly a decision comes very slowly. Uh, they don't work well with deadlines. Um, they don't naturally manage their time well. They're, they're often stressed if they're asked to make a quick decision or perform a quick action. Um, also, they don't mind changing tracks in the middle of a project. So the perceivers tend to, to like to start things and not necessarily finish them. Uh, they don't like routine, and they tend to procrastinate um, more than judges do. Uh, so does that describe you? I would love to know how you resonate with that or if you if you know perceivers in your life or if you are one we all are on the spectrum and the reality is that we all uh, we're all on the spectrum between perceiver and judger and p's or j's sometimes they're called and then we all can flex the muscle of the other side as well because as human beings ultimately we are moldable uh, and our personality type can actually change over the years. Um, it, it takes a lot of work to change the personality type, but or it takes an environment that totally makes you something over many years. Um, but generally, you are the, the way you're born and raised. You tend to be one one type, and then trying to be another type takes you more energy um, and, and, tr and training or practice, etc. So, let me now describe. Let me now, so what do you think you are? Go ahead and comment below before I go on. Are you a perceiver? Did, did, did I just describe you or are you probably the opposite? Go ahead and let me know. All right, let me start to describe the judgers now. Okay, so judgers, on the other hand, Jays, like to, uh, love to plan things out. They love calendars, scheduling things, following their schedule, to-do lists, deadlines, routines. They love closure and completion. Um, they like to make decisions, you know, uh, let's figure out what we're going to do. Let's, they like predictability. Um, you know, they don't, so they get, they get bent out of shape more quickly when things don't go according to plan. That's one, one of the, one of the weaknesses of by their, both sides of strengths and weaknesses. So that's one of the weaknesses of judges. Um, so they don't have a, uh, they don't have an easy time dealing with unexpected information um, uh, things don't going, uh, go according to their plan. And so they don't tend to, to want to become entrepreneurs. They tend to, they like the security of a job. I know exactly what I'm, you know, when my income is coming in and, um, they don't like risk and uncertainty. So which one are you? Are you a perceiver? Uh, are you a judger? What do you think you are? And thank you, Ida. Ida has already put in there that uh, Ida sounds like, you know, what you're, what you've taken the test, so you you are an INSP. Um, oh, actually, I think it's um, uh, I, I think you're I, INFP, I, I believe, because uh, 
uh, that that third letter is either feeling or thinking. So uh, anyway, so I, I tend to attract a lot of IN, INFPs uh, into my into my um, clientele. Um, so can you guess what I am? Am I a perceiver? Am I a judger? Let me let me keep going. And I just love I just love for you to take a guess. It just based on what you know about me, what you what you can. Um, okay, so let me just continue on with my notes here. Um, the thing about judging and perceiving is that it's not, like I said, it's not a inborn trait that you are that way forevermore, but they call it a preference. So you, you, you are more naturally this way, but you can also, you know, stretch your muscles in the other direction when the situation requires. So for example, if you are a perceiver and then you're in a job where you know, the organization is very structured, very regimented, your boss uh, is very strict about deadlines and due dates, then you will be flexing your judger muscles a lot in that, in that job. And maybe over decades, you might actually start to prefer that and your personality might change. But it takes a long, long time, you know, of, of, of effort. Just like learning any new skill, something that doesn't come naturally to you, it takes time of practice, practice, practice before it, it, it does become second nature, essentially, right? And the other thing about the whole judging, per perceiving J and P thing is that it's regarding how you interact with the world. So these letters are about how you interact with the world. And you might actually be different uh, in how you interact with your inner life and, and with your thoughts. So some people are actually perceivers internally, but then externally, maybe because of their environment or their company or their family or, or society or culture, they might act like a J externally, but they're a P internally and vice versa. Some people might be really like structure and routine or whatever, but because of their environment, or whatever, they act like a P outside. So the test actually is about how you act externally in the world. What, what do other people perceive of you uh, do they perceive you more as a P or a J? Um, now, I don't know whether or not it's usually in, aligned between inner and outer. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know enough about the Myers-Briggs to know that, but I just know that based on the research, it seems like it's, it's about how you interact out, outside. Um, Vita says, perceiver for sure. Uh, Stacy, thanks for joining. Uh, Jay says, can we have a combination of both? We all are on the spectrum. We all are on the spectrum. So uh, as an example, when I, when I took the Myers-Briggs test back in college, it was the first time I took it. And then I took it several other times uh, since. When I first took the Myers-Briggs test, I came out as an extrovert. Okay, so there's four letters, right? You know, there's extrovert, introvert, um, thinking uh, or, or sensing, uh, and, and, uh, uh, in, in, intuitive versus sensing. Which doesn't actually, it's not actually what it sounds like. Well, well, kind of, but, and then there's thinking versus feeling and there's uh, judging versus perceiving, right? So I, I used to be an E, an, an, an extrovert back in college, but then over the years as I've, as I've grown, uh, as I've become more and more of an adult, now I test as an I. But back then when I, when I tested, I, now I test as an, as an introvert. Back then when I tested as an extrovert, I was also just on the cusp between extrovert and introvert and now I guess I've, I've turned the corner and now I'm, I'm more introverted but I still I, I'm not way introverted I'm just kind of um, you know kind of in, in between the E and the I um, so yes we are all we're all on the spectrum and it, you might want to go go online and search you know Myers-Briggs test and there are lots of free tests out there T take several take several of them because each one probably has slightly different questions and and, and see what you average out as, and and take it again in you know a couple of years and see if you if you moved uh, in there. Um, and okay, so well, uh, I, I I won't keep you in suspense any longer. Uh, I am for sure a J. I am a judger. Now, uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely a judger. Um, it's interesting that I'm a judger because I am very entrepreneurial. I'm very, uh, I guess, creative or open-minded. Uh, but whenever I'm tested, there is no question. I'm not like on the on the edge between J and P. I'm definitely uh, definitely a J. I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely a J. That's one of my strongest characteristics. So it's not a surprise that I'm always preaching routine. Have you noticed? Like I, I. 
this has been a really uh, interesting sort of revisit of this whole topic for me because now I'm I'm wondering. A lot of you are peas. I, I just in my own clientele, as I've asked people, I, I work with a lot of peas. I work with a lot of perceivers, you know. Whereas I'm a very strong judger, so sometimes I honestly feel like an alien among my client base because I'm like, why am I so different? What is it about me? It's like I have to really stretch to understand my clients. It is, it's really it's it's a it's a it's it's an effort for me. It's, it takes me energy to really try to understand my clients and how they feel and how they think. And I'm I'm definitely I feel like I'm still a baby in understanding my clients. Honestly, uh, I have a long way to go going. Thankfully, I probably have another forty to eighty. You know, depending on modern medicine, right? I have another forty to eighty years of working life <laughs> left. So uh, I'll I'll give myself the break. You know, I've I've been in I've been in business for ten years successfully. I have another 40 to 80 years. Now I'm really going to start understanding you all better because <laughs> I feel like up to now I have not understood you very well, which is why my content, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll notice my content getting better and better over the years as I get to understand you better because I will tell you, it, it, is, it is now I realize the past 10 years of content that I've created, I, I didn't create content for the first five, six years. So really the past three or four years of content that I've created, I've been very J. I've created from a J mindset, from a judger mindset. I've assumed that, of course, you have to be, uh, you ha of course, you have to love routine. Of course, you have to love calendars. And that you, of course, you should love deadlines. You should repair your relationship with deadlines. I say that. I always say you should repair your relationship with deadlines because it's easy for me, because it's natural for me. I was born and raised as a J. So it comes natural for me to love deadlines. I love deadlines. I love due dates. I love calendars. I love structure. I love following my calendar all day long. I love to-do lists and clearing them. My email is, is, is cleared almost every day. Now you know why. It's because it's natural for me to do that. And it's probably not natural for you. It's very hard for you. Now I have to you know, be more, I'm, I'm grateful to revisit all this thing because now I'm even more compassionate. It's hard for you to clear your inbox, to follow a schedule, to, to follow my curriculum, to, 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 to have a to-do list and to clear that, to, to categorize things, to have information be put into buckets. That's so easy for me. That's just natural for me to use spreadsheets, create structure, you know, create processes, create a plan, create backup plans upon backup plans. I have backup, 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 you know, so many backup plans, but it's all planned out, you know. And so uh, anyway, I want to I want to thank you for your patience with me, all of you who are peas for um, for like sometimes going, God, why is it so easy for George to, to create a successful now that so that's that's the thing that I want to inquire with you. I want you to brainstorm with me now because I have been so dense, you know, it's like I only think in terms of a J. I am so J, such a judger. I have thought about business development in completely in a J kind of way. And like I said, the next 10 years, the next decade now, you know, now that I've, the next decade I am now learning to think like a P. Now it's going to have to stretch in your direction. I have, you have to teach me how a P thinks, those of you who are. I mean, some of you are J's, you're like, yay, I'm a J too. But uh, let me see, let me actually see right here in the chats if we have any J's. Um, okay, so uh, a lot of, oh, some of you are saying you, you use the DISC system. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know, okay, so I haven't seen any, any other, uh, any comments here about P or J, but those of you watching this later, please let me know. So. Basically, I know how to run a business as a J. I know that you need to be consistent with your content. I know because with consistency and with routine comes skill building. So that I know, and, and here's the other thing you should know. The whole business world, much of it is built around Js. Corporate, corporate the companies and organizations tend to, um, I'll just say this, Again, speaking from a J, of course I can I, I, I see the entire world through a J-colored J colored lens here. I think businesses thrive when they're J's, when, when it's run by J's, right? So what about P's? What, where, how do P's contribute to the whole picture? Well, P's, like I said, are more creative, 
curious, open-minded. They don't want to come to conclusions very quickly. So they tend to, to be, um, uh, they tend to be able to uh, come up with new ideas, uh, innovation. So that's the, the strength that, that P's bring into business, so entrepreneurship, etc. But the problem with P's is they have a harder time getting things done, right? P's are, 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 have a hard time delivering on schedule. And so when it comes to a solopreneur business, the way I know how to do it, I understand a solopreneur business meaning that you have to get good at content. Like you have to get good. You have to develop your skill, right? Uh, either in content or in networking. It's really one or the other. If you don't want to do content, you don't have to do content. This might come as a surprise to you. <laughs> okay. But, but I, I, should have, I, I should say this more often. You don't have to create any content at all in your business to, to have a thriving six-figure, seven-figure, eight-figure business. But if you're not going to create content, then you have to be extraordinarily good at networking. You have to be so good at, at, at connecting with others and, and really forming relationships and partnerships that allow you to bring your business to a lot of people. There's really two ways that I know of creating a successful business. There's either content or there's networking. Now, some people do both. I think I'm a little bit good at both. I, I started my business, I created a six-figure business. In my first five years, you said, George, you said you didn't create content until three, four years ago. It's because I, I created a successful business, six-figure business, very well, you know, almost mid-six-figure business as a solopreneur in my first five years, not doing any content. Yes, I started without any content. First five years, made a lot of money, only doing networking. I just created partnerships that brought my, my product and services out to big audiences. And it's only in the last four years that I, and I am I trying to build a successful business with content. And now I have, because I, as you, if you follow my videos, you know, I have not, I have been a terrible networker in the last four to five years. I really have not kept up with my colleagues. You know, I, I just, my business has, was started from, I closed down my business my product services uh, four years ago and I started from scratch again. And essentially I changed from a networking type of business to a content type of business. So now I have a thriving business yet again, but completely because of content. So now I know how to build both types of businesses. So, um, so perceivers, you may, you may, it may, may make more sense for you to create a networking type of business. Maybe because you don't have the discipline <laughs> Right, it's hard for you to have the discipline to create content, and if you don't have the discipline to creating content, you're not going to get good at creating content. You won't really become a good writer. You won't become a good speaker if you don't do it consistently, because the the way that skill building works, like for example, playing the piano. If you play the piano whenever you feel like playing the piano, you're not going to become a good piano player. But if you play the piano every single day without fail you can become a great piano player or uh, you can become a great swimmer or you can become a great, you know, um, you know, knitter. I mean, whatever skill that you want or, or, or a great content creator, any skill you want to develop needs the discipline. The more frequently you do it, the faster you grow that skill. So that's why when I first started doing video for um, uh, back in 2015, I did it every single day, Monday through Friday. Took, took the weekends off. That's how I got good at doing videos and speaking. That's how I got good at it so quickly. Now you can't get me off a of video. That's how I got over my video block. And same thing with writing. I hated writing before 2015, before 2016. I, I, I just was a terrible writer. I hated writing. Just did not like it at all. But because I'm a J, I was able to force myself, discipline myself to write every single day, Monday through Friday. And then by 2016, I had overcome my writer's block and I was fine with writing now. And now in 2018, I'm a pretty good writer. I'm a, I'm a pretty decent writer. Writing is not a problem for me anymore. I'm a different person because of discipline, because of consistency. I am a different person now, you know, in terms of my skills and my ability to expand my, my message and my business, et cetera. So please help me out. If you are, or even doesn't matter if you know you're a P or a J or whatever you think you are, Help me brainstorm, how can someone who is a perceiver, how can they succeed in business, in this solopreneur especially? Uh, you know, perceivers, you could probably do fine in a company, in a job where someone else gives you structure, 
And that's maybe part of the part of the solution is you need to partner with a coach or to join a business program, to join a business group uh, you know, that you pay money to. So you have some skin in the game that you feel like, okay, I don't want to waste this here. You need to pay money to a coach or a group who is very much J or gives you that kind of structure that you believe in. Like you have to believe in the structure. Otherwise, as a P, you're not going to do it. It doesn't matter how many structures are given to you. If you don't believe in it, you're a solopreneur. You're like nobody's your boss, right? So if you don't believe in the structure, you're not going to do it. So you have, to, you have to join a program or a person whose structure you really believe in, that that makes sense to you, that you say, yeah, I'm going to commit to that. And even though I'm a P and I, don't, I hate deadlines and routines, I believe in it. So I'm going to stretch my muscles in that J direction and try to follow the structure. Because as a P, if you're a P, it's hard for you to come up with structure. It's not natural to you. It's hard for you to make plans, right? Struct step-by-step plans. It's easy for me. I can come up with I can come up with five steps to do this any day, all day long. I can come. With, tell me what what routine or, or tell me what what goal you want, and I can come up with a five-step structure just like that. Like I could just you know. Uh, it starts off, uh, you could say I'm BSing the five steps, or you could say that somehow as a J, I channel it very easily, or I can come up with it very quickly because the way I think. So anyway, I hope this is helpful, and um, uh, I, I want to end because all oh, I'm just going to keep rambling on about, <laughs> about J and P, but uh, th thanks, thanks for um, helping me brainstorm how can perceivers, because as a J, I have a hard time thinking of as, how can perceivers um, succeed as a solopreneur business in the modern world what what does that look like what does a successful perceiver led business look like perceiver built business look like i honestly don't know and i'm trying to figure that out so so yeah i can help my clients better please help me help my clients better <laughs> okay um so thanks to those of you who are joining this call uh joining sorry joining this this facebook live video jace uh slash captain uh, Alejandra, welcome and thanks to you. Carissa, hello. Annie, Arturo, Ida, hello. Um, and let's see who else is joining here. Sharon and uh, let's see, Sharon and Stacy, um, uh, Vita. Uh, thank you all for joining. So let's let me just kind of address some of the comments going on here. Uh, Ida says, "Yes, I need outside accountability. That's why I'm a master. I'm a master heart in utilizing coaching. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Alejandra says, yes. It takes the right kind of understanding and motivation to inspire me to be more like a J. I'm doing it. it takes practice. Yeah, it, it takes. If you are a P, it takes you more energy. That's just the bottom line." So you're going to need more sleep after trying to be a J that day. You know, you're going to need more rest. You're going to need more self-care because, you know, it's, I mean, honestly, the modern world, in my opinion, is a J world. Again, that's, again, probably coming from the J perspective. Maybe as a, maybe it's a P world. I don't know. But to me, it looks a lot like a J world, right? Like you have to, well, government, you know, governments and positions on us are, are J. You have to pay your taxes on time. You have to fill out these forms. No, that's all J stuff. If you work in, in, in business, you have to deliver to your clients on time. You have to, you know, that's all J stuff. So, so no wonder those of you who are P's realize that, oh, my God, self-care is so important because I'm exhausted in a J world. I'm in a J world. Like this is the third dimension has, you know, this life it has a deadline. It's called death. <laughs> so even life itself might be have formed as a J uh, experience for all of you who are perceivers. And I think perceivers, I imagine perceivers are probably more naturally intuitive in terms of like spiritual, like you are, I think I'm going to just riff here a little bit. I imagine the spiritual world is probably like the, the, the afterlife or the spirit world is probably more P, right? Because it's totally open. It's infinite. Right. It's there is no boundaries. The boundaries are all just for convention purposes. It's just maybe the boundaries to help you grow in a certain area. But the reality of, 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 of life and of, of the universe and spirit is perceiver. It's P. It's it's infinite. It's open ended. Uh, no, there's no quick decisions are not needed because there's there's no time in, in, in the afterlife, in the in the spirit world. And so, you know, you are very brave. As a P, you came in as a spirit, right, uh, into this very J world 
to learn how to stretch in the J direction a little bit more, maybe. Again, I'm just completely rambling and, and uh, riffing here, but uh, it's fun for me to think about anyway. So I hope this is helpful, and I look forward to your comments and your suggestions on how can you, if you are a P or if you can imagine your, uh, what a P is like, how can P's uh, be helped to succeed more uh, in business, to grow a business, and to do it without, uh, <laughs> to do it with, with to do it with enough within enough time to not run out of money because again we we live in a J world there's a there's a there's a reality that you will run out of money if you don't build a business in time right so um, or you'll run out of life right so I appreciate your thoughts and I look forward to seeing your comments uh, below thank you so much have a great day whether you are a J or a P I wish you well-being. And I wish you authentic success. Take care.